De Jong. Now Pedri. Ansu Fati opening up his body. Is that going to go in? Yes, it is. Ansu Fati manages to sneak this one through Inai Simon. Now De Jong scooping this one for Sergio Aguero. Controls that one well. Goes for the chip. Oh, it's brilliant from Sergio Aguero. Absolutely brilliant. Last episode, we made a massive transfer for the series in signing Frank Yannick Kessi in a big, big swap deal involving Sergio Busquets. And that has instantly improved our team. And that was clearly visible, guys, at the Spanish Super Cup as we managed to win our very first trophy of the series. Yes, I know it's not an important trophy, but still, it was really nice to get some silverware, knocking out Real Madrid in the process as well. Now, as you guys know, we can only make that one signing in January and we've completed that. But there is still a kind of an emotional signing we could be making in this episode. It involves a certain former number eight of Barcelona. So be a bit patient. Maybe we'll figure it out in this episode. So yeah, possibly a certain icon could be joining Barcelona back again. We're going to get through league games, wrap up the transfer window, maybe even beginning our Champions League knockout rounds journey. So exciting times ahead in this series. Oh, I forgot. Usman Dembele's contract situation will be addressed as well in this one. So drop a like in the video if you're enjoying. Subscribe if you're new around here. And let's get on the grind. First press conference question. Put a development plan on Balde and give him more game time so that he can be in your starting 11 as soon as Alba starts to drop ratings. Good thing for us is Jordi Alba has retained his overall for a fair bit, maybe because we're playing him every game. But yes, I am focusing on growing Balde's rating. I don't know how much he's grown by this season already. He's gone up by a couple of ratings. That's great to see. And he's on a defensive wide back plan. So his defending stats are going up massively. But it's going to be a process, man. I'll slowly start giving him more game time though. Next up, extend Dembele's contract for another two or three years and sell him next season for a lot of money. You can buy a proper replacement or improve a lot of other positions. This is the logical thing to do because Usman Dembele will generate us at least about 70, 80 million if we renew his contract. But the thing is, I kind of want to keep this series realistic. If Usman Dembele signs another contract, that means he's going to stay at Barcelona. If he doesn't, it means he's going to leave on a free. That's how, it, that's what will happen in real life. Not like us signing him on a new deal and then selling him next season. That's kind of unrealistic. So what I want to do, guys, for the rest of the transfer, window will give Usman Dembele an opportunity to leave and the next season we'll have enough money to bring in a replacement anyway so yes there is a possibility Dembele could be leaving on a free I don't want to sell him this season because I need him until the end of the season but this is how I'm going to be running things and if until the end of the window he hasn't signed with any other club we'll make a move and sign Dembele on another two or three year deal and then we'll see what needs to be done next season that's how I'm going to run things with Dembele let's see if it's the right thing to do next up give Pau Torres the number three now that PK is gone, he's been amazing in defense and he deserves it. What kit number does Pau Torres have as of now? Um, he's got number 15. So, okay, Pau Torres number 3 noted. Actually, there's a lot we need to do with kit numbers because if there's a certain former number 8 joining, we'll have to switch things around. So, we'll get to that in this episode. Sergio Aguero was just unbelievable in that last episode because he scored against Madrid, the goal to knock them out, and scored in the final as well. Like, what a freaking player to have. And we finally figured out how to use him in the team with Memphis Depay. It's Depay on the right, Aguero up top. It's working for us. He's having a phenomenal season. I doubt we're going to keep Aguero up next season as well so let's enjoy this one season he's giving us played of the episode for him second one i believe all right guys you lot guessed it right we spoke about andres iniesta returning to barcelona a player for the history books i want to make it happen guys i'm desperate to make it happen i know he's not going to be giving us an insane half a season or anything but the fact that we'll be able to retire him at barcelona with that number eight jersey it's huge and i'm gonna do it guys he's not gonna be playing every game he's barely gonna be playing for us but it's a an emotional signing that I think we need to make. Let's sign him and bring him back to the Camp Nou from Vissel Kobe in Japan. He deserves to be at Barca and retire here, just like how players like Xavi did and Puyol as well. Let's do this. Okay, it shouldn't be an expensive signing. I'm just going to offer the 5 million. I reckon Vissel Kobe should accept that, 5 million. They want 6.9 and a sell-on clause. What do you want a sell-on clause for? The man is 37. He's not going to be making any other moves. Anyways, we'll just pay it because 
we've got the cash 6.9 million for andres iniesta let's get the contract sort it's not going to be too demanding we know that we're going to give him sporadic squad role which i think he should accept which he does so he's not really going to crib too much about his lack of game time or anything which is fantastic Wages for Iniesta, I'm just going to offer him 20,000 per week, about 200,000 for the signing bonus. It's a very nice contract indeed, and I reckon Andres should accept this. Let's see what he says, boys. Is he going to rejoin Barca? He wants a bit more. He, Andres Iniesta still knows he's worth a lot, and he wants 31,000 per week. We'll oblige. Let's give him that. Andres Iniesta has just been re-signed for Barcelona. An emotional signing, but one that i'm super duper excited about let's go okay so as i said a bit of a bit of stuff on the kit number changes pau torres is going to be our new number three since pk is gone we gave pk a good farewell he played an el Clasico to end off his barcelona career so now pau torres is going to be our number three also kessie will move him to number five sergio busquets's number and where is don andres iniesta will give him that number eight and why is his contract expiring in six months did we just sign him on a six month deal maybe it's the smart thing because we only need him for the next six months so oh, he looks good and back in the barca colors boys he does look perfect and when he does play he's gonna captain the team as well can't wait to see how he does on his return to the club i'm not crying guys you are maybe i am as well oh my god this is emotional andres iniesta is back at barca quick look at our season objectives as well we're just one goal away from completing the dutch connection objective and once we do that we'll be looking for new objectives to put in for the rest of the season so make sure you stay up to date with what's happening and keep commenting new possible objectives also ansu fati just needs five more goals actually we're doing well with the la masia stuff but we'll take a quick gander and see what's up the puige objective is a bit of a tricky one we need to grow Puig by four overalls until the end of the season. That's not going to be easy. There's been so much interest in Gavi. Like, it's a bit mad. Pablo Gavi, offer from Liverpool. I'm rejecting it. I have no interest in letting Gavi leave the club at this early stage. What a player he is. Did you guys see how good he was in the Nations League final? Crazy. We're smashing through a couple of games in La Liga next. This one's against Rayo Vallecano. By the way, Falcao plays for them. I don't get this, man. I really don't get this. How are we dropping points like this? Oh. In, in, in like every league game it's so frustrating like even in the games that we sim we take the l a draw is basically an l when it's rio vallecano man just so freaking frustrating offer for aguero i don't even want to look at it i don't even care but my god is it frustrating all right this time it's alaves can't afford to drop points against them man can't afford and i'm i'm so glad we got a win and sergio roberto got sent off and we still managed to beat them i'll take that guys I'll absolutely take that. Oh, the Copa del Rey begins now and we've drawn Granada in the round of 30. Dude, this should be an easy one. Yeah, just gonna quick sim this game. Get it out of the way. It's Granada. We should be able to knock them out and we do. But it took a 79th minute winner from Ansu Fati. Round of 16 of the cup. We come. We need to win the Copa del Rey this season, I'm feeling. Because if we don't, our Champions League and La Liga objectives most likely will be failed and will be in trouble. So, yeah, the Copa is big. Okay, now. Okay, okay, okay. Valencia have just agreed to pay the release clause for Serginho Dest. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not letting that happen, boys. I am not letting that happen. Where the hell is Serginho Dest? Approached by Valencia. Delegate renewal. No, no, no. Actually, let, let's do the negotiations properly because I don't want to take any chances with him leaving. So let's sort this contract out. We'll give him rotation squad role, which I think he should accept. Let's just get that release clause out of the way because I do not want him leaving, man. Okay, he doesn't want an extension. Maybe a one-year extension works in our favor. He's willing to work with that. No release clause. Why do you want a 70 mil release clause, man? We're not giving any release clause to you. Salary-wise, we'll give him a bit of a bump to 80,000. 300,000 signing bonus should work and should be enough to renew Serginho Dest and just get all that interest in him out of the door. So there you go. Serginho Dest is renewed. He ain't going anywhere. And now we've got Cadiz in the cup. I'm going to be using Eric Garcia for this one. Uh, we'll also play Balde and I'll keep the team as is for this one. It's again in the cup. We need to win this. We can't afford to get knocked out so early on in the cup. We don't. Eric Garcia getting a goal is good for him. That's nice. Into the round of quarterfinals, I think. Quarterfinals of the cup we go. Let's go. We're on the transfer deadline. 
deadline day right now. I'm pretty much done with all my signings. Um, and we're just going to get through it and then focus on the league, the Champions League, whatever. Okay, this is actually interesting. A short-term loan deal for Nico Gonzalez. I'm going to accept this because I feel like with the signing of Iniesta, Puig and Kessie in here, might be beneficial for him to leave. But I don't think that deal will be com completed in time. So it's kind of pointless. It was just two hours left on deadline day. Anyways, that is the window done. Gonzalez loan hasn't gone through. We've got a youth squad monthly report. Oh, okay. Cabrera helps us complete the objective and so does Rojas pretty much. That's brilliant. One more month of scouting and we can promote them and get the objective out of the way. So with the transfer window done, this is the squad we're going to be working with until the end of the season. It's got its issues. Let's be real about it. The bench is pretty average, but this is what we have. This is what we're dealing with and we're just going to have to run with it. Are you actually kidding me? We've drawn Real Madrid in the quarterfinals of the Spanish Cup. It just had to happen. So in this episode, well, we're now going to be playing Real Madrid. We played them last episode. We knocked them out of the Super Cup. We now will try and knock them out of the Spanish Cup as well. Barca, Real Madrid, and the Copa del Rey. They should be fun. If I'm being honest, we got to take the Spanish Cup super seriously because of the fact that in the other competitions, we're not doing all that well. So we're taking this game very seriously. Probably our strongest 11 right now. One more thing I want to do. It's time to put Andres Iniesta on the bench because I want to bring him on and an El Clasico to bring him on for his return to Barca would just be perfect. If things are going well, only then I'll make that call. Barca Madrid, let's knock them out of the Spanish Cup, just like we did in the last episode. Last episode, you could say we really turned the corner in this series because finally against the big teams, we stepped up, got the required results and knocked out a club like Real Madrid because I think so far this season, the only big teams we had beaten were Bayern and that was pretty much a fluke. We got absolutely thrashed the second time we played them. So it was nice beating Real Madrid, but we need to make that a regular occurrence. Karim Benzema looking for Eden Hazard. Back for Benzema. Oh, that's that's very good from Benzema. Ball back in. Eden Hazard. Kostegin did very well there. Remember, it's a knockout game, so there's no do-overs here. We need to get the result in this one fixture. Ooh. De Jong, scooping this one for Sergio Aguero. He's not the quickest of players, but he's got a bit of strength to hold off his man. Sergio Aguero, difficult angle, but oh, the driven shot stopped by Courtois. Fantastic goalkeeping, both De Stegen and Courtois on point in this game. Ronald Araujo, chest that one down really, really well. By the way, we need to talk about making him captain potentially, so we'll do that after this game. Serginho Dest, still Dest. Getting behind his man. Ah, oh, he walked that one wide. I was trying to go for the cutback for Aguero. So far, guys, very, very impressive game as Eriksen has made the move to uh, Liverpool. Fair play. I can't lie. Kessie has completely transformed our midfield. Just the, the dynamism he brings. It's crazy. Like, the difference between having him and Sergio Busquets is light and day. What a player to have, honestly. Is Memphis offside. Oh. Pau Torres now donning Gerard Piquet's number, number three on Pau Torres as he drives it forward. Here he goes. Ah, that was kind of a waste. Carvajal does well. And in fact, now on the breakaway, Karim Benzema could do damage. You're looking for that pass for Eden Hazard. No, we let Real Madrid take the lead in this Copa del Rey game. I cannot afford to get knocked out. Hazard celebrates. Oh, come on. He's doing that Trent Alexander-Arnold thing. Oh, God. 1-0 up Real Madrid. The, the, just what we did need. It was Pau Torres, like, driving the ball forward. He made a mistake, and that cost us there. No two ways about it. But here we go, guys. Chance to maybe get an instant comeback or something. Again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking it wide, beating the man, but then walking out of the bounds, which is uh, not what we need. Frankie de Jong, good pass for Memphis. Pedri, Ansu Fati, massive chance. Ansu going for goal. How is Courtois saving that? Incredible. Honestly, Courtois is one of the reasons Real Madrid are still in the lead. Benzema is just insane. The passing he's done for Hazard and all is just crazy. And the fact that he scores the goals he scores as well. Honestly, what a player. What a freaking player. Okay, on the breakaway, we might have a chance here. Sergio Aguero finding Memphis Depay. Calmly done. Has to score. Let's go. We get the equalizer. Memphis Depay with the goal. 1-1 one, one against Madrid. His first ever goal in an El Clasico. And it's a good one. On the breakaway, Real Madrid for some reason just committed everybody forward. And look at the spaces we got to exploit. Aguero just scooping it for Depay. One touch and then bang on the half volley. Puts it home. 1-1. One, one. Barcelona back in it. We're not going to die so easily, guys. 
We're not going to give up so easily in this Classico. I'm desperate to knock out Madrid and make it to that semis. Half time against Madrid. I'm so glad we got that equaliser literally at the perfect time. Second half, let's push for more. So Gino Dest. Good pass from Memphis Depay. Oh, I tried to scoop it for Sergio Aguero. Cooley Bali. Oh, I got the interception right there. Oh, what are they doing? What is Real Madrid doing? They almost just scored an own goal. Courtois, very good reaction times to get that one away. But that was hilarious what Real Madrid were trying to do. Is Tony Cruz skipping past Araujo? That's not common. And Madrid just keeping possession well. And they've got a good chance here. Pau Torres making up for those missed or those errors he made in the first half. Good defending. Okay, now Madrid bursting through th with Fede Valverde. Cross comes in. Araujo needs to win the header. Oh, he does. He does. He does that brilliantly. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like Real Madrid having a chance here. Cross coming in. Kessie needs to win that. Benzema fighting for it. Still Benzema on the turn. He's just a phenomenal footballer, guys. Oh, my God. Still 1-1 against Madrid. It's Cruz to put this one in. Jordi Alba. It's chaos. It's chaos. Can we get it away? We can. Pedri. Calm there. Naraujo now driving it forward. Are there any players making good runs? I don't think so. Still Araujo. What was that? We did something similar with Pau Torres. Ended up conceding. Ah, that's frustrating. Call me crazy for doing this. But Andres Iniesta is coming on for his Barca return in a Clasico. We're doing it, guys. Bring him on for Pedri. This is going to be emotional. Don Andres Iniesta, our number eight is back. A historic and iconic Barca player. We're giving him a chance to shine in a Clasico again. And I'm sure he'll take it. He's that kind of a player, man. He is that kind of a player. Tony Cruz, Fede Valverde. I don't like this. It's now Lucas Vasquez. Ball back in. Pau Torres heads it away. Now here's Andres Iniesta. He doesn't have the pace he had before. But we know how good of a dribbler he is. And somehow gets a bit lucky. But we can't keep it. Oh, need to be a little wary of Andres Iniesta's pace. Because I just can't pace abuse with him at all. It's Vasquez now. On the turn. Ball back in. What a chance that was for them. Oh my god, Real Madrid almost scoring a ridiculous goal there. But thankfully, they didn't end up scoring that. Wow. Andres Iniesta. Oh, that is just beautiful. What a ball for Memphis Depay as we move it forward now with De Jong. See Sergio Aguero. Come on, De Jong. You need to pass better. Still Mendy looking for the ball back in. Serginho Des saving us. This game's going to go to extra time, boys. I'm feeling it. <sighs> Unless we concede from a set piece here, which, come on, can't afford to do so. Tony Cruz puts it in. Get it away. Casemiro almost trying the spectacular. But yep, we're going to extra time. By the way, Usman Dembele is still at the club. No club made an offer for him, which is a big surprise. Which means we are going to renew him after this game. I'm going to play Dembele for the second for extra time, basically. He's going to play on the right. Depay up top. Let's hope this works. I, I, I'm desperate to knock out Madrid. Andres Iniesta. Smartly done to find Jordi Alba. It's, it's beautiful seeing Iniesta and Alba link up. Frankie de Jong. Now Serginho Des. We're moving the ball around well. Ah, oh, come on. It's just such good defending from Madrid. It's been two really good defensive performances from Barca and Madrid. You don't say that often, but fair enough. Certainly issues as Kessie with what a block. This is what he offers, guys. He's got that physicality to get into those situations. And that's just so useful for us. As Ansu with a terrible through ball for Memphis can't be giving away the ball like that. Vinicius Jr. looking for Avega. I don't know who he is. Casemiro going for goal. Pau Torres with the block. De Stegen with the save. What a run of play. How did we not end up conceding that? I've got no idea, but it's 1-1. It's still 1-1. And first half of extra time is just flown by against Real Madrid. Oh my days. De Jong helps get that one away for Iniesta. Calm play. And he just helps keep possession so well there. Wow. Andres Iniesta holding off his man. Does so brilliantly. Looking for Memphis. Back for Andres Iniesta. This could lead to something. De Jong. Finding Serginho Dest. Inside for Memphis. No. Koulibaly. Did you guys see how good Iniesta was in the build-up play? Class is permanent, man. Oh my god. Vega has turned me there. Vega has turned me. De Stegen has saved me, though. Oh, what a performance this has been from De Stegen. We've been so, so bad. And... Oh, to be fair, it's been even Stevens, but oh, it's, I'm scared. Andres Iniesta with a good block. De Stegen punches it away instead of catching it. That's one of his first mistakes of the game. Cross comes in. It's a good one. De Stegen, please. Oof, oof. I think this game is going to go to penalties, and I'm, I'm genuinely terrified. Man Dembele. What a ball that is for Memphis. Memphis Depay on his left foot forces a big save out of Courtois. What's happening in this game, guys? It's crazy. We find ourselves in a set-piece scenario with Memphis putting the ball in. Kessie running for it. Everybody missed it. And Real Madrid get the ball away. No, not yet. Not yet. 
Courtois forced to get it away. It wasn't the best of clearances. How Torres messes up, though. And just three minutes to go. Is anybody going to get a goal or something? I don't know. I really don't know what's happening here. One last attack of the game. We cannot concede now because I will genuinely cry. I think it's it's done. Yep, it's done. Penalties in a classical. When is the last time we've seen penalties in a classical? I, I seriously don't remember. I'm, I just don't remember seeing penalties in a classical. But yeah, that's what's happening here. Mad. Ooh, Kessie having 89 penalties is amazing. Andres Iniesta could take the final penalty. Can you even imagine the scenes? The first one will be taking it with Kessie. He's got to put this one in the back of the net. I'm going left. I'm going left. Please don't save it. Hey, let's go, Kessie. What a pen this is. It's going to be David Alaba to take this one. I'm going left. He's missed. David Alaba is missed. Huge, huge, huge for us, guys. Next up, Usman Dembele. Going to put this one top bins. Going to put this one top bins. Let's go, Usman Dembele. Love to see it. Now, next up is Rodrigo. Come on, Ter Stegen. Two and two for him. Real Madrid choking the penalty shootout. Next up, it's Memphis Depay. I'm going to go top bins with him. Oh, what a pen. That's the best penalty I've taken in FIFA 22. If Ter Stegen saves this from Tony Cruz, his national team compatriot, we're going through to the next round. Ah, oh, that was a perfect pen. That is a perfect pen. Now a chance for Ansu Fati. How fitting is it that it's Ansu Fati taking the final penalty? Let's put this one in. Let's put this one in with Ansu. Bottom left corner. Bang. It's done. Real Madrid have been knocked out of the Spanish Cup in the most dramatic way possible. And look at me run there. Hey, I'm faster than the rest of the team. We've won this penalty shootout. Don Andres' return is marked by a special occasion. Barcelona are going through to, of course, the semi-finals of the Spanish Cup. Didn't believe or didn't expect the Spanish Cup to provide this kind of drama. You don't see El Clasico penalty shootouts often, but you got one here and it was epic. Let's go. Okay, now we get transfer offers for Sergio Roberto, which I think we can accept now because next season we're not going to have all the transfer rules, like at least most of them. So we can sign a new right back next season. So I'm okay with accepting an offer like this from Villarreal. I think I want to negotiate to get a little bit more money, but selling Sergio Roberto for next season, I think is a smart move. I think we can counter with, let's say, 32 million and see what Unai Emery says. He'll stay in La Liga, which I think he prefers. And let's see if he's willing to work with this. They're only willing to pay 27. Let's just accept it, guys. So, yeah, Sergio Roberto could be sold. We'll still have him until the end of the season, which is key. Balde, don't want to sell him. So, in the next round of the Spanish Cup, it's Sevilla. And I'm pretty sure it's over two legs. That's going to be epic. Bilbao potentially in the final again. We'll see. A real good chance of winning our second trophy of the save. What we aren't winning, though, is La Liga. 17 points off Atletico Madrid, who are unbeaten in the league. We need to recall Griezmann and sell him ASAP because, my God, are Atleti insane. And guess what? We play them next in the camp now. We've got nothing to play for apart from potentially taking three points away from Atleti and handing them their first defeat and maybe making some ground over Real Madrid. Right now, Atleti have just won La Liga already. It's incredible how good they are. Who's the top scorer in, in La Liga right now? Of course, no wonder. Luis Suarez is killing it for them. And that's why Atletico Madrid are doing so well. 19-21 for him mad. Also, as you guys know, Usman Dembele's contract is expiring. Nobody came in for him, which is a surprise. So we'll renew him for a few more years. But next season, I'm still not sure whether I want Dembele to be the right winger for this team or someone else. Crucial squad role is his demand. Let's see, we'll offer him a four-year deal. He should accept that. There you go, he does. But again, as I'm saying, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to keep him. So no release clause as well. We'll, we'll control his future. We'll offer him 170 maybe about 800 in signing bonus because I think that's I think that I think we've overpaid I really think we've overpaid on the contract but oh well Dembele has re-signed for Barca call me crazy but I'm starting Mingueza and Garcia against Atletico Sergio Roberto and Balde as well a lot of rotations my squad is exhausted after that Clasico and I do not want to risk an injury or something right now in La Liga we're, we're basically going to finish her there's no chance of winning it might as well just rotate the squad and just run with it that's my theory and that's what I'm doing here. We've got bigger fish to fry in the Champions League and the Spanish Cup right now. We're kind of sacrificing La Liga. Probably the wrong thing to do, but oh well. We're basically using our second team, at least defensively, against Atletico. A bit mad, that is, honestly. But as I said, they're unbeaten in La Liga. What are the chances? Even with our first team, we're going to beat them. Plus, even if we beat them, we'll be 14 points off. So 
it's time to just be smart about the situation and of course prioritize different competitions let me know if you guys think it's the right deal still though I wouldn't put it past us potentially beating Atletico, yeah? As Kessie takes one from distance, big save from Oblak. Set piece opportunity, Dembele putting it in. That was, oh yeah, nothing was happening with that, though it's false for Pedri. Pedri, left foot, oh, not, not, not a good effort though, as oh, they get it away. Oh, good pass for Pedri, what a chance. Pedri, no, he's put it wide. For a moment, I thought we could be getting the lead against uh, Atletico. Pedri, no. Just shows he's not the best of finishers. Oh, Ricky Puig trying a good pass for Usman Dembele. He got there. Rebound. I can't believe, man. The rebound's just... Oh. We're playing well, actually. The second team at the back, I think they've got a lot to prove and a point to, you know, a point to prove. And it's, it's working. But, oh, frustrating that we haven't taken the lead. We can't afford to waste chances with the players uh, Atleti have got. You know, Griezmann, Luis Suarez and all. They're going to just, they're going to score like this, like that, like that. Wow, what a play that was from Atletico Madrid. Suarez and Griezmann linking up beautifully. And then Thomas Lema with the finish. That's Atletico Madrid for you. This season, they've been untouchable. I swear they could go unbeaten throughout the whole season. That's how good they've been. Rodrigo De Paul. They've got De Paul in midfield as well. This might be the, the you know, the Atleti squad that they've got might be the best ever squad this club has ever had. Like... At the back, they've got they've got the quality defenders. They've got the midfielders. It's it's actually mental how good they are. Another chance for Luis Suarez finding Koke. It's Luis Suarez again to Stegen with a big save. He was onside as well. Dembele. Oh, that is a lovely pass for Sergio Roberto. Ball back into the box for Aguero, but cleared away. Puig, how is Puig not winning that header? He got absolutely taken out as well by Lemar. Pedri. Ansu Fati now. We know he's got the pace. Here he goes. Ansu Fati. What are our options? As he brings it wide. Oh, Marcus Llorente is so good. Oh, I'm sending this one for Aguero. And literally from a Atletico Madrid corner or something. We've got a chance. But De Paul, this Atleti team is just so well drilled to deal with every situation. Be it a counter, be it, you know, slow build-up play. It's just too good as Mingueza gets dragged out of position to Stegen forced to make a save. In this first half, it's been men against boys. I know we've used our second team at the back, but still, it's getting embarrassing at this point. Ansu Fati looks absolutely exhausted, so I'm going to bring on Depay for the left. But yeah, we're still 1-0 down. To be fair, we're still in it. It's only 1-0. We can maybe sneak away with a draw or something. We just got to stay together and just keep hanging on. That's a good ball in. Balde with the big... Oh, come on. That was almost a goal for Marcus Llorente. Balde just couldn't win that header over Marcus Llorente. Not surprised, though. Not surprised at all. But... Avoided conceding. Antoine Griezmann. Oh, that's brilliantly done. That's brilliantly done. Ter Stegen has kept us in it. Probably played of the episode, guys, because the amount of saves we've seen him make, it's, it's, it's mad. Balde looking for Pedri. That was nice. Ricky Puig taking one from distance, but there were too many players there. We still have it. We still have it. Ricky Puig looking for Pedri. Pedri on the turn. Finding Kessie. Kessie's good with the long shots, but literally comes right back to him. Another chance for him to score. This time it's way above the cross, but I'm trying everything to maybe like sneak in a goal or something, but the Atleti defense manages to deal with everything. Oh, Antoine Griezmann, not Griezmann, man, not Griezmann! Oh, he's on loan at Atletico, ends up scoring and celebrating. Huh, La Liga's been frustrating this season, man, honestly. Really, really frustrating. Thomas Lemar going for goal to Stegen with a big save. I'm kidding you not. Even though we've conceded a fair few goals in this episode, the saves the Stegen's made has kept us from being embarrassed. Okay, to put this one in, and wow, wow, wow. 3-0 down to Atletico Madrid. 3-0 down to Atletico Madrid. They're going to continue their unbeaten run. What are we doing in La Liga, man? Honestly, it could get worse. It could honestly get worse now as the cross comes in. Sergio Roberto is in no man's land. What a save from Ter Stegen. He hit the post as well in the process. I'm, I just hate my life. I literally do. You know what? We can't give to Stegen bit of the episode when we've conceded four goals. We just can't. Like, because this was savable, I think. Maybe not, but wow. Wow, wow, wow. Huh. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Uh, yeah, that sums it up. Unreal. And there you go, full time. Embarrassing. Well, I'm not going to be using my second team's backline anymore in big games. We sacrificed this athletic game, but literally embarrassed us. Look at the empty seats in the crowd. Everybody just left. 
after witnessing this embarrassment. Atletico had an XG of 5.2. That this might be the worst game we've ever played. The state of this man. Real Madrid also lost their game, but look at Atletico. 20 points clear. They might end up winning La Liga unbeaten and with like one of the biggest margins this league has ever seen. It's mental how bad we've been. We need to secure third and even potentially fight for Real Madrid for, for second because otherwise we could get sacked. Winning the Spanish Cup is priority. Next episode, we'll have the two legs against them. Champions League knockout rounds. The draw will be in the next episode as well. A lot to look forward to, but man, winning La Liga in this safe might be the most difficult thing or most challenging thing we've got to try and achieve because Atletico are at a different level and of course we've got Real Madrid. Player of the episode is a bit of a tricky one, I'm not entirely sure. Against Madrid, De Stegen was great on the pens. You know what? I think I'm still going to stick with De Stegen. He made some huge saves throughout the episode. Penalty shootout dub as well gotta be him. With that boys, this is where this eventful episode comes to an end. We had a penalty shootout for the first time in this series, which we won, by the way. Embarrassed in La Liga, Iniesta back home, a lot happened. Next episode onwards, the business end of the season begins. Champions League, Copa del Rey knockout games, gonna be exciting. Drop a like at the video if you're enjoying this series, subscribe if you're new around here and well, catch you guys next time. Peace.